Hey guys, this is an interesting package. Um, reason being, it's, it's an Xbox 360 game that's become really, really hard to get hold of. Um, I've been looking in shops for it for months, I've been calling around uh, different places and they just don't have it in stock. Uh, the strange thing about it is it was well received, well reviewed and I think it sold quite well as well. Uh, but whenever you try and get it in a shop it's going to be 40 quid, regardless of the fact that it's now every year old, maybe two years. Um, and I remember seeing a second only game a couple of times for 39.99, and you know you literally just think, "Fuck you!" That's like, you're not going to pay that price for a second hand game. If you are, then you know you're getting ripped off. Um, but ultimately, <laughs> that was the way things went, and I ended up getting this for 36 pounds. Um, I'll show you what it is, and uh, maybe we can shed some light on why it's so expensive. Let's have a look here. This is the game in question. Won't come out of the bag. Game question is Tales of Vesperia for uh, obviously the Xbox 360. Now, obviously, it's uh, from the Tales series of games, and this was the first one and, and still is to date, I think, to be featured, uh, you know, on like a HD console. So the Wii sort of sub HD. Um, and yeah, it was really well received. I remember playing the demo and thinking it was great, but it was one of those games where I figured I've got a lot of JRPGs and you know what I'll do is I'll wait for this to drop in price then I'll pick it up. And in the meantime I played um, Eternal Sonata which I thought was a great game but this one, the combat system in this certainly had my interest or held my interest um, more or maybe not held is the right, the right way to put it but it, it, it guarded my interest a lot better. And um, I played the demo quite a few times and I just I really like it, really like the gameplay. And uh, yeah, I've been, like I say, trying to hunt it down for months on end, and, and in the end I just gave up and thought, oh, what the hell. I sold some stuff on eBay, and with the money, I spent face quid on uh, Tales of Vesperia, which, yep, is in fact a two-year-old game. But like I say, this thing's such a nightmare to find. So uh, let's check the condition of this bad boy. It looks to be pretty good. It is second-hand. I mean, that, like I say, that's the madness of this game. You can't, just cannot pick it up new for anything less than 50 quid, which is nuts. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's an Entry of the Tales series, so it's a JRPG, and it's got a real-time uh, combat system, effectively. I think you might have to, like cooldown timers, um, a la sort of Final Fantasy XII and that kind of thing. Um, but the combat is real-time, you can freely move around on the screen, choose from a variety of attacks. And it just really, it's just really refreshing for me, I, I like RPGs. But um, the, for my liking, there's almost too many turn-based RPGs, and... Uh, Sometimes that'll put me off, especially when they um, kind of suck like Final Fantasy XIII did, or at least don't live up to uh, expectations. But this one really did, this just blew me away. And uh, I do have Tales of Symphonia for the um, GameCube, which I never actually got a, a chance to play. And I know it was really, really, really well received, so I'm going to put some hours into this one, and then I'm going to go back and play that. Um, what's strange about it is Tales of Symphonia, is it Dawn of the New World, something like that, the sequel? came out on the, uh, on the Wii recently, the sequel to the GameCube slash Dreamcast original. And um, you can currently pick that up for about anywhere between 6 and 15 quid online. Uh, for some reason that was poorly received, and just, I guess, I don't know, it just didn't, didn't score well at all in the reviews. And from what I've seen of it, it looks largely the same as this, gameplay-wise. So I don't know how how it translates to that game is, is you know, below average, and this is exceptional, but I'll certainly be curious to find out. Like I say, you can pick that one up really cheap online. So I think I'll look into that, maybe give it a shot. But uh, like I say, I'm so happy to finally own this, and I can finally sink some hours into it, which is exactly what I'm going to do now. Um, so yeah, that's Tales of Vesperia for the Xbox 360, or Vesperia, however you want to say it. Uh, the other thing I picked up recently is Halo Reach. Uh, and you know, I don't think there's much you can really say about this game that hasn't already been said. Um, single player campaign seems really solid. I'm enjoying playing it online. Um, but it must be said, as much as I'm enjoying this, it's it's same old, same old. It's just more Halo. You know, uh, the graphics are slightly high resolution, the fidelity's better. Uh, there's more detail on the guns and stuff. The explosion effects, the particle effects look absolutely phenomenal. But, it is more Halo. And, um, if that's what you're looking for, then by all means pick it up. But if you're expecting something revolutionary or, or completely different, or really at all different from anything you've experienced before in the Halo universe, then you won't find it here. It's just a sort of definitive package. It's got 
the best parts of all the multiplayer, really solid single player campaign. The firefight that was in ODST uh, mode, which is effectively sort of like a left the dead kind of thing, where you have hordes of enemies or waves of enemies attacking you um, one after the other. Uh, that's now properly online before you had to invite your friends, which is a complete pain in the ass. But now you can actually, I think, have a matchmaking process on that and just get chucked in with anyone, which is a lot better. Uh, it's got a ton of game modes. I mean, it's just, it's just the definitive Halo. That's, that's all there is to it. Um, and I actually went to the midnight launch to get this, um, primarily because my girlfriend was going to get it for a little brother. And I was going to be up anyway, watching uh, Roar in the morning because you know, a wrestling nut. So I figured, what the hell? I went there and. Uh, the cool thing was, when you go to these launches, I don't know what's in there at the moment, Hello Wars, when you go to these launches, they tend to give you um, the pre-order bonuses for free, so there you go, you just chuck them at you. So I got those as well, uh, which is what, some sort of armour, recon armour, and I think like a helmet, nothing too spectacular. Didn't want to dive into the collector's editions, because I'm not, I like Halo, as you can see, I've got Halo Wars and... Hello Free, I've actually got them all. Um, I enjoy playing the series, but it's it's not something I consistently come back to. I'll plow through the campaign and really enjoy it. I'll, I'll play some online and, and really enjoy that too, but it's not my game to come back to. My game to come back to is uh, Super Street Fighter 4. You know, that's the game where every time the Xbox goes on, nine times out of ten it's what's in the drive, but, <laughs> but that's the, uh, the sort of go-to game for me. But yeah, so yeah, enough rambling. There's two Xbox 360 games, um, both of which I can't wait to put some more time into. So, as always, thanks for watching, and uh, there'll be a new video shortly. This package here uh, is a game that I bought from eBay with, um, I guess, credit, effectively. Um, what I've been doing recently is selling a bunch of my stuff in my trade videos, you may have seen. And um, just popping that on eBay, and instead of spending money on new games, <coughs> which I obviously do too much of, uh, I'm just going to sort of use the money I get from selling old games to get new games, which is pretty reasonable. Or at least, I say new, you know, this one, for instance, is a retro game, but you, you know what I mean, new to me. Um, this game in particular I saw, I've seen it covered quite a lot actually, uh, but the one that really made me want to get hold of it was a Happy Console Gamer video, uh, where I think he just did sort of history of the series of these games. And um, he really sort of caught my interest with it, so I'll just show you what this is, just try to look at that, and get it out here. And uh, we'll go from there. So it's an RPG, and it's for the Sega Dreamcast, if it ever comes out. And uh, nothing else in there, so let me just claw away at the bubble wrap, even though you can read what it is already. Grandia 2, uh, as I say, for the Sega Dreamcast. And uh, we're hoping, I'm hoping, this one comes complete as the disc. Oh yeah, and the manual is in pretty good shape. In fact, the box is in good shape as well, so I'm hoping this means nearly new. Oh, absolutely brilliant condition. So yeah, uh, Grandia, um, <clears throat> from what I gathered from the Happy Console Gamer video, uh, the original Grandia, which came out on the Sega Saturn, I believe, in Japan, uh, was supposed to be the Sega Saturn's answer to Final Fantasy VII at the time. Uh, apparently it didn't pan out that way, and it ended up getting released, um, Grandia 1, ended up getting released uh, overseas in America and the UK, I believe. Uh, possibly not the UK actually, but it got released, you know, with an English translation on the PlayStation. And um, apparently it was a slightly inferior version just in terms of performance on the system, because it was built for the ground up originally on the Saturn. Um, and I think it was a, it was a pretty a moderate hit, not as big as anyone would have wanted it to have been, uh, but it did pretty well. And then, um, you know, for the for the Dreamcast, I guess Sega again asked them to do the same sort of thing, so they produced the sequel, Grandia 2, uh, which. Again, the Dreamcast kind of died a similar fate um, to the Saturn, in that it just never really took off. As such, this game ended up getting ported port to the PlayStation 2. Um, and uh, apparently the PlayStation 2 version, would you believe it, not as good as the original Dreamcast one. So it's kind of a pattern there. Um, you know, subsequently they did develop a Grandia 3 for the PlayStation 2, exclusively. So, you know, if you look for a Grandia game built from the ground up on the PlayStation 2, I guess that'd be your one. But yeah, this is one of the most sort of like I guess sought after uh, Dreamcast RPGs, uh, next to like Tales of Symphonia, stuff like that. And uh, it, it does look really interesting. The art style is unique. Um, the, one of the reasons I bought it and didn't get the American version is because this one, as you can see there, is VGA compatible. Uh, and when you run games through the VGA, um, 
what you'll find is they run in 60 hertz anyway. So even if the game doesn't support 60 hertz, strictly speaking, uh, with a standard connection, it always will with your VGA. So you know that's great for me because I'm only going to play it through the LCD. Um, I, like I said, I don't really know a lot about these games. I just know it's a really quality RPG, and apparently the sort of character development and uh, just the story it tells is really intriguing and interesting. Uh, typical JRPG combat system from what I've seen, primarily turn-based. But um, yeah, it just looks like a really interesting title. And uh, I'll pop some footage up, obviously, on the screen. And hopefully I'll crash some hours into this and uh, give you some sort of verdict. So, as always, thanks for watching, and I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Dan W. Five, four, seven.